And good evening, listeners, and welcome to another episode of Current Events on Tap, a podcast brought to you by the Alex Kirsch Project, where, like the drinks, the current events are on the house. And I'm your host, Alex Kirsch, pragmatic progressive, U.S. Army veteran, truck driver, gamer, and streamer. If this is your first time on the show, please do not forget to hit like, share, and comment. We are currently streaming live on YouTube, X, and Twitch. The format of the show is very simple. I bring one or more guests onto this show. We talk beer or beverage of choice and current events of the week. Each person will discuss their beverage of choice. For this hour, whether it's alcoholic or non-alcoholic, it does not matter. Then each person will cover two current events of their choosing. They give the current event, they give their assessment, then each person gives a chance to give their assessment, then we discuss. Now, debate may be possible, but rest assured, you are in a good faith zone, and you will get your chance to get your point across. The point of this space is for all of us to discuss the issues, what we think of it, and keep an open mind to find out what the other person has to say. But please remember to keep it within two of us. Now, without further ado, let's welcome our guest this evening, Small Peanut, friend of the show. How you doing, Peanut? Good. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. So, um, you want to go ahead and give yourself like a quick shout out, and, like where people can find you, and like if you have any platforms, anything like that. Um. Well, you can find me on Twitter at only Small Peanut. Not streaming yet. I don't know when. Probably soon. Um. But yeah, I'm on Twitter, and you know me. You know me. Yeah, what kind of stuff are you going to do when you stream? Uh, I think I want to do gaming, and I might even do puzzles. Like, I think it'd be cool to do puzzles and art and stuff like that. Some politics, maybe, depends on what's currently going on in the world. Yeah. But that kind of more fun-routed stuff. Oh, absolutely. Like, what kind of games are we talking here? Oh, we got Stardew. I'm going to do Animal Crossing. I'm going to be doing Sims. Might do some shooters, maybe Call of Duty or something. Um, definitely going to be doing, um, GTA again before, you know, 6 comes out next year. Mm hmm Okay. What kind of puzzles are we talking? Are we just talking, like, you know, 500 pieces? Like 500 pieces for rookies. I do 2,000 to 1, 1,000 to 2,000, and I got a special puzzle board for my birthday, so it's easy it's to move around. I can just put a camera yeah. up. Oh, okay. So it turns cool. around, yep. and I can put, like, a, there's drawers, and I can just prop a camera up, so it'll be cool. Okay. Are you going to, like, play any music in the background, or are you just going to just, like, shoot? Might do music. I make sure I will have to find a new playlist that's not K-pop, though. Oh, yeah. Not everybody's cup of tea. Yeah. I, I don't listen to K-pop. That's not my thing, but that's okay. I, mean, I know some people right. like K-pop. You know, that's just, like, it, it, music is very subjective. Like, for example, some people... Some people love country music. I despise it. I can't stand country music completely. I do, but that Cowboy Carter. <laughs> that Beyonce country album. I don't know. I just I just can't do it, though. I just really can't do... Uh, I do the whole on my truck, my broken heart. I can't do that stuff. So I can't. Well, the thing I've always found out with country music, and I say this to everybody, it all sounds the same at the end. It goes... Brrrr, it's got that same guitar note. But, you know, me, I'm a metalhead. I'm a rock and roll part kind of person. That's my shit right there. So I've been to so many concerts and I've got stories for days on that shit. So I, I love music, but yeah, it's it's a very interesting market though to go uh, gaming and uh, puzzles. I've never really thought about puzzles before. I mean, is there a lot of people doing that? I don't know any. I think the only person who does puzzles is um, Germa. He'll sometimes do those puzzle streams sometimes, but like not many people. And also, uh. I will be, like, talking while I'm doing the puzzles. I just get boring just seeing it. Yeah. But, like, when I do video games, I definitely want to do some, like, chat interaction when that happens and stuff. I feel like it'd be cool if I did, like... Yep, he froze. Before GTA 6 comes out. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see what else. And I also want to try games I've never played before. I have never played a Baldur's Gate game, but everybody talks about how good it is. Yep. So maybe try some new games I've never tried before. Yep. Yeah, I, I've never been much for Baldur's Gate. I mean, I've heard a lot of great things about sure, it. I, I've heard great things, so. yeah, I've heard Baldur's Gate 3 is absolute fire. Um, never played it before. Um, I, I like games like that. Uh, my all-time favorite video game series is Mass Effect. That's my shit, because I'm a science fiction. I love science fiction. Like, that's my shit right there, so. I did remember what game series I will be playing first, though, if I do. Uh, Yakuza, like, like a Dragon, that is my game series Which I've one? been part of. Like a Dragon, mm -hmm. aka Yakuza. Mm -hmm. I love those games. Mm -hmm. I finished all of them. Mm -hmm. I would definitely replay them again, and I I love those games. They're great. Okay, I've never played those games either. Um, I They're love. Great. I I also love uh the Dragon Age series. Love Dragon Age so good. I'm Bioware, even though Bioware has been falling off, can it's been falling off the wagon a little bit lately. So, um, before we jump into our current events, uh, why don't you go ahead and share with us your uh, beverage for the evening? 
Having a Malibu cocktail to strawberry daiquiri. I'm not really a big alcohol person. I like mixed drinks more because you don't really taste just that abundance of alcohol. And this is very fruity, and so I like it. There you go. Hey, nothing wrong with that, you know. Um, I used to be a mixed drink person myself. I used to do rum and cokes all the time. But after I went to Germany, I became a beer person. I became a bit of a beer snob. Sense. Yeah, I became a bit of a beer snob. So tonight I am drinking, I think it's called Detroit Light from Atwater Brewery based out of Detroit, Michigan. So I I bought it because it looked interesting enough. It's okay. It's it's not – Atwater does some pretty good ones. But um, beer, for some people, like they don't like the taste of it, which I get. I understand. But like once you've been to Germany and you've had real beer, it's like it opens up your eyes. It opens up your senses. It's just like uh, the, the, the doors just open up. Now like I base a beer, and I say this every single week, and I know people probably get sick and tired of it, but I judge a beer based upon whether I can drink it room temperature or cold that's how i judge mm -hmm. a good beer and if i can drink at room temperature or cold that's what i call a good beer so but yeah um anyway cheers to you peanut there's have a, let's have a fun show how about it all right all right so into current events time to talk about the this first topic is not very serious but i thought it was hilarious so that's why i want to share it so uh first topic so the manga gop has showed how unwilling they are to do their job, which is to pass legislation that can actually benefit the American people. Now, are they concerned about health care? <laughs> no. Are they concerned about inflation? Of course not. They talk about it, but they don't care about it. Are they wanting to prevent, you know, price gouging at the gas pump? Absolutely not. Do they have a plan to make sure that children don't die in school shootings? <laughs> That's a laugh. Of course not. So what are they worried about? Daddy government is coming for your laundry machines, your fridges, and your dishwasher. That's right, the manga GOP is not screaming about how the government is coming for guns, even though they've been saying the exact same shit for 20 plus years. You know, Representative Mike Burgess of Texas is the new chair of the House Rules Committee, who's replacing Tom Cole from Oklahoma. Now, the first me meeting that he's going to sit down is going to be this coming Monday, and they're going to examine the and go over the following bills. The Hands Off Our, Our Appliances Act, Liberty and Laundry Act, Closed Dryers Reliability Act, Refrigerator Freedom Act, Affordable Air Conditioning Act, and Stop Unaffordable Standards Act. Now, this sounds like it could be from the Onion, but no, these bills are 100% legitimate. People are actually pushing forward on these bills. Now, I tried reading these bills. Peanut, I know you tried reading them too. There is so much legal jargon, and it drives me nuts. It's like legal jargon and lingo. I don't understand these things. Now, I know it's because I know I'm not the smartest guy in the box, but it's just like, I, I need to be able to see what the bill says. because you even read the bill. It just didn't show anything for me. It just said the name of the bill, and that's it. Yeah, it really did. But so just to kind of summar summarize what it's all about. Republicans seem to think that Biden, that passed a number of laws to combat climate change via the Inflation Reduction Act, has tried to find ways to get people geared towards utilizing green energy uh, more often. Now, the many who are freaking out are the ones who are the ones, ones most against combating climate change, and they are against the move to green energy. They think the Inflation Reduction Act was a crock of shit, even though it has brought green energy jobs to their districts with wind turbines, like example in Colorado with Lauren Boebert. She says, oh, this is a crock of shit, even though green energy jobs gave people jobs in her district that she actually bailed out on. So what's the gist? You know, Republicans are just, they worry about this push for green energy and having major companies go energy efficient will drive up the cost of appliances like fridges, dishwashers, washers, and dryers. Now, I'm going to be totally honest. As appliance technology gets more advanced, it's going to get more expensive regardless. Now, more expensive means more expensive parts. More repairmen nowadays will not even touch damaged appliances because of the amount of work that's needed, and people might as well buy a new appliance. Now, when we first moved into our house, we bought all new appliances, a new oven, dishwasher, and but we brought up our laundry machines up from Georgia. Now, within six months, our oven went out because a mouse chewed the wires and got fried. Now, the repairman said it would cost just as much to buy a whole new oven. I was pissed. Claire was devastated. It was absolutely just, uh, it was horrendous because it was not a cover under warranty. I mean, even though it was a new oven, mice biting through your oven or like on the wires in there because it was an it, it was an uh, induction oven too so the, it does not cover that so basically we were shed a luck and had to buy a whole brand new oven now this is just this is a couple years ago too so these concerns about taking away choice from people who may want to buy a better appliance for starters the u.s government is not going to be to blame if people have to pay extra for appliances 
the private sector jobs that build these appliances have very, very wealthy CEOs that invest in such technology, and they're the ones that are going to make the increase. Then you have the truck driving companies who have to deliver these products, so they have to get to charge whatever the companies want to pay. You know, the list goes on and on. I wouldn't want to bore people with details. Now, the concept of building appliances that save us on energy costs is a net positive, in case anyone is wondering. Now, is there a chance we could be charged more? Well, absolutely. That happens every time there is new advancement in technology, regardless of what it may be. It's whoever controls the market that has the best customer service, the most cost-effective means of repair or purchase for the customer. That's what determines whether a product is or is not successful. It's all tied together. So, Peter, give me your thoughts on this. When I first read this, I thought it was a load of bullshit, because, but it also reminds me of the TikTok ban. Congress has nothing else better to do than to introduce bills that nobody gives a shit about. Mm-hmm. Things are going to go up. Inflation's, inflation is happening in real time, people. Look at it. Things are going to go up. But you know what? Doesn't stop the climate change and the fact that our planet could erupt in any moment. <laughs> I mean, the sun could burst tomorrow. So I think any initiative that does help trying to make any of our appliances anything better is great. And you're not forced to buy these things. You're not forced. They're just coming to the market. There are other choices. Just like you're not forced to buy an electric car or a hybrid vehicle. They're all choices. You literally can choose. I mean, they're more expensive for a reason. But hey, if you want to, you know, have that. And I think what it will really come to, what will really matter is durability. Do these last longer than other kinds? If it lasts longer, then the price for it might be bad. It might make more sense. If I'm getting a sofa that's going to last me six years, yeah, it's probably going to be $900, $1,000. Or I'm going to get a sofa that lasts me two years and that's $300. It really depends on durability. And I wouldn't blame these people that don't want to touch it because you know what? It costs more for them. They have so much more liability if they break my product than I can sue them for breaking my product. It's a whole thing. And it comes down to how you promote these products. If you're doing good promotion, people want to buy it. Promotion, promotion, promotion. And people that like to live off the grid, if these are climate like saving stuff and it's off the, really good for off the grid, people are going to buy that shit up. And if you think about people that um, live in the vans and stuff like that, if they have climate like good ovens and stuff like that, it's easier to put in those. It might cost more, but it's easier to put in those. And a lot of tiny home living, um, off the grid living, Van life is very popular right now, so it makes sense. Absolutely. Think about it. If you can have the, your oven being powered by solar panel, et cetera, et cetera, that's literally, like, so good. That's so good. Absolutely. And I'm so glad you brought up, like, the whole uh, electric cars because they got people out there saying, I'm being forced to buy an electric car. Okay, no, you're not. It's, it's all about, like, the reason why there's being such a big push for it, especially here in the United States, it's because we're trying to control the marketplace because if we don't control it, guess who does? China. China is the per- is the other country that's building these electric cars. And the same thing goes for appliances. Either we control the marketplace and either we can find ways to conserve energy better. Because, you know, we always complain about like how in the summertime, my power bill blows up because it gets it gets hotter or Why? it gets it gets colder in wherever you're at in the world. So if if you don't have a gas, if you don't have propane, and whatnot, you're using electricity. Like, for example, um, I've got split units, so I don't use gas anymore. So my power bill is going to be a little bit higher, but my house stays nice and warm. If I have the ability to save and like conserve a little bit of energy with appliances, I'm going to take full advantage of that because that's going to save me money in the long run. Now, mm-hmm. am I being forced to do this? Of course not. You know, this is why when it comes down to buying appliances, like adulting is buying new appliances and you're so happy. You're so proud of yourself. Like, oh, look at this dishwasher. People think that. <laughs> Well, people are like, oh, it's not that big. It is a big deal because when you've had a bad dishwasher, you know how oh much of a difference God. it is. Exactly. See, see, you and I are on the same sheet of music here, okay? We're talking about like adulting is buying new appliances that work, that function, that are going to give you longevity over time. And if you can get something that can actually help you save on your power bill, absolutely I'm going to get that. But it was a big push in New York for people to get solar power. Like when I was in New York, when I used, when I lived there, and it wasn't really a thing. But when I visit, everybody and their mom has solar panels on their freaking roofs now because it's saving them so much more money. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you think about it in the long run, this stuff does save you money. It's good for the earth, and I think people just really it may cost you more, more upfront, but you're saving so much more down the road. Hundred percent. You know, I, I want to get solar panels as well, but it's just like we we haven't got to that point yet. We've we've got other investments that we've got to make in on. But like kind of going back to like this whole, I, the thing is, is like 
the reason why I find this hilarious that the fact that the the the, the MAGA GOP is pushing this forward is because these are useless bills, right? They are useless. It, the first two years of the Biden administration, Democrats pushed forward bills like the infrastructure bill, the PAC Act. Bill, the, yeah. uh, the infrastructure is one of my top topics. Okay, you've heard me talk about infrastructure quite a few times. <laughs> it's one of my biggest things. But like I go for the things that I know can greatly affect and make things better for Americans. This doesn't mean a fucking thing as far as I'm concerned. This is just an empty bill to get people to be worried that, you know, big daddy government's coming to come take shit from you. No one's going to boycott your stuff. Communism is going to happen and you get five choices for a freaking dishwasher. I mean, you also, but you have to think, you have to think about it. Like, we're not the only ones that are leading in this technology. You have Co- Samsung in Korea and all the other ones in China. So it's like, but it, so it's like there is a there's a market, but it also comes down to choice. These are choices. You are not forced to make these. And the fact that they keep proposing bills that are based on choices doesn't do anything for anybody. You know, like I, the reason I said the TikTok ban is because it's another one that's useless. It's a choice to use this app, but I know there's also other things, whatever they may be. But these are choices. Nobody's impeding you that you have to get the newest solar panel stove. That's not feasible for me right now. Maybe down the line. But you know what? It's it's a choice. What if somebody there's people that live in those eco houses, that eco lifestyle, whatever. They would love that shit. Oh, yeah. Well, and, you know, like when it comes down to like, uh, uh, you know, not hybrids, but like electric cars. I live out in the sticks, okay? It's not feasible for me to have an electric car right now. Um, let alone the fact that we've got horses. There's not an electric truck out there that's going to haul horses from point A to point B. So we're going to stick with gas. You know, like, I, I, we, because, you know, my, my wife has looked into these trucks. Can. Huh? You do what you can. You do what you can afford. Exactly. You can do what makes it easier for you. Absolutely. Like, the thing with the electric cars is that, but the Teslas, it's because they're popular and they're cool. They got all the cool gadgets, the doors, and all that stuff. It's what makes it, it's what's trendy. It's what's cool. Hey, if there's an oven that I can play music on my oven, oh, yeah, who wouldn't want that, you know? It's what's trendy. Like, you see the refrigerators with the giant screens where you can go on, like, an, it's like an iPad. It's like, these are all choices, and it's the fact that they want to use resources, time, and just that it's, it's annoying and it's not doing anything that's helpful. It really isn't. We have such bigger things to worry about. I mean, unemployment may be low, but there are people still not working. It's not easy to get a job. The job market's not great right now. I mean, we have bigger issues like, you know, funding for other things. Like the infrastructure bill, yeah, it's a big thing, but I don't, nobody sees anything happening. People may see stuff happening, but there's a lot of, every day on the news, it's something with Biden's infrastructure bill, something with this, something with that. It's like, there's so many bigger fish to fry. It's like, why are you worrying about this stuff? And it's just like, I feel like these people live in their own little heads and it's like the world revolves around me. Listen, if you want to not be here, you don't have to be here. Yeah, absolutely. I Another wanna... choice. They have, most of them have enough money not to live in the United States. I'm going to be honest. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But it, it's just, it's stalling. It's stalling. I feel like these are just empty bills to take our time and focus on other issues. But, you know, I think like the only one that's like really taking effect now because like was the one where you actually said much like did you see what's going on i was like yeah but we're not going to get into the middle east stuff that's that's going to take <laughs> that's a whole nother can of worms three hours. yeah it's it's all over the place but yeah it's I, I just look at this as just you know empty legislation that is just taking up time and costing you know not thousands but millions of dollars for people to look into it's not even that big of a deal I mean, it, it's, a kind of assembly. it's a waste of people's resources and time to go and assemble to look at a bill about freaking refrigerators. Yep. Like Biden had like a good like Biden was like, listen, let's try and do a way where we can, you know, cut back on emissions from these things. Cool. Why is so wrong about that? That's what I don't compute. Like, why do you want to fight back about against somebody trying to help our planet when literally there are people saying if we don't fix our planet and like m- a um, few years, 2050 ain't going to be a thing. Yep. It just isn't going to be a thing. Yep. Well, the reason why is because a lot of these people that are voting against it are, you know, they have... Climate change. Well, <laughs> the reason well, it's just, it's because they have, uh, a lot of them are funded by the lobbyists that are in, in associated with uh, big oil. And they say that they don't want to, uh, what's it called? They don't want to use uh, uh, tax write-offs for, no, it's, it's not tax write-offs. They, they do it's it for ruining their cooperation. Yeah, yeah, they're basically yeah. not helping their yeah. partners. Yeah. They want to help their partners. Mm-hmm. So by doing something that doesn't help their partners, it looks bad and yeah. it's not good. Yeah. Because they don't want to do the same thing for green energy like they do for big oil. Because everybody looks at big oil as like, well, big oil works. Yeah, it does work. Okay. I understand that it works. 
but they're also ripping us off with a pump. People need to understand that the president does not control the price of gas. Oh my god. Yep. I like how that, that was a whole thing you see all over the internet. Thanks, Biden, for the three dollars at the gas station. Yes, because Biden goes in his office and says, I want it three dollars today. Yep. That's not how that works. It, it really isn't. I mean, I that that's a whole other can of worms right there, but it's just people yeah. understand <laughs> this. It's like the, the, the price of gas is determined by the market, by supply and demand, and guess who really sets the final price? Big oil. They're the ones that set the price. They and they have made consistent profits the past four years, far five six years actually. They've made record profits, and they say, you know, we still need to charge more because of what's going on. But th there's a lot of things that are kind of tying into it. But people say, oh, uh, Keystone XL pipeline. Okay, first off, that wasn't going to do anything. Moving all this stuff back to our country instead of relying on the Middle East. Aren't we pumping here now? Like trying to pump more here? Yeah, we are. So it's like, what is the big? Like I understand if we're getting a third party source. I know that somebody told me that we have to get some of it from there yes. to make sure that it works in our land. Yep. I think maybe you told me that. Yeah. Um something about that. But I understand that it's not like we're just relying on them wholeheartedly for all our oil. So it doesn't need to be five dollars, six dollars. It could be a reasonable price. We're not relying on them for a whole shipment. We maybe need some so ours can under so our oil can um understand how to process the right oil. Absolutely. I think that's what you kinda of told me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It might have been me. I can't remember, but like that's what it is. Because like, it oil is a global commodity. Everybody imports and exports oil. And you know when people are saying, "Oh well, we were importing oil from Russia from Biden. We've been importing Russia <laughs> Russian oil for years." I mean, it's like it's nothing new. But it's just this is why it's so important. But a lot of people just don't want to look into this stuff. Like, and they 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 see the headlines, and that's they they make their decision upon that. And you know, I love my country. But we are filled with morons. Let's put it that way. I just need somebody to be there in there and be like, this is bullshit. Stop the fucking shit and go on. Somebody needs to be like, be there and be like, God, like, I don't, I, I wish there was somebody to say, guys, grow the fuck up. Stop with this petty shit. Let's get some shit done. And even, I, and it's not just, I don't want to say it's just Republicans because the Democrats also are not doing their best. Everybody needs to do their best for this country or else. Nothing goes, nothing happens. So yeah. people need to pull them up by the bootstraps or whatever the fuck they call it. Well, before we move on to the next topic, I think it's because John Stewart said it best when they refused to sign the Pact Act initially. He says, these guys are tortoises. These guys live forever. They can be in office for years. And that's so true. I mean, it's just oh like. God, don't get me started on office terms. Yeah. It's yeah. a whole can of worms for me. It yeah. really pisses me off. It, it does too. But thankfully, my governor in this state. They enacted term limits here, so you can only serve up to twelve years in office. Even Fucking that, up. it's the, the thing that the term the the term limits and time limits, which which really angers me, is the judges. Yeah, I don't want eighty year old judges who don't know shit mm. on my on the freaking court. It's twenty twenty four. I mean, we have people in office who don't know how the internet works. Okay, it's a mockery. It's a it literally people will look at our country and laugh at us when you have CEOs from companies come in and people ask them. Uh, how does the internet work? Does this connect to your internet? I don't want some 50-year-old Joe Schmo who's never even used the internet in his life to tell me to dictate what I can go on, what I can do with my internet. No. It's a whole can of worms and it just makes me angry because that's not how our country should be happening. 100%. We need fresh blood. We need younger people. We need people who know what the fuck they're doing. Absolutely. 100%. All right. So why don't you go ahead and give us your first topic? Topic is a woozy. So uh, my friend told me about this because I guess they saw it. But there are people who actually think that the solar eclipse would be the end of time, just like the two thousands would be the end of time. So a lady um, decided she thought that this was going to be the end of the world. So she decided to write on Twitter, "Wake up, wake up! The apoc apocalypse is here. Everyone who has ears, listen. Your time to choose what you believe is now. If you believe a new world is possible for the people, retweet now." There is power and choice. There is power and choice. Repost to make the choice for the collective. Well, this lady, by the name of Danielle Johnson, thought it would be a great idea, since the world might be ending on the solar eclipse, to kill her boyfriend and throw out her child, her children, out of the car on the highway in L.A. Now, sadly, the boyfriend's dead. The One of the children is, the little kid is dead. And the nine-year-old somehow survived. But she, th and it says this on this article around 5 a.m johnson threw her nine-year-old daughter out of the car and onto the freeway while the girl clutched her eight-year-old baby sister the older child survived the fall and escaped traffic but the infant was de found dead at the scene this is insane to me that people believe that the solar eclipse will bring 
death to all. I was actually watching a TikTok the same day that this eclipse happened where people were hoarding at the Walmarts and Targets for water because they thought it was the end of the world. Now, I'm sorry to break it to you, but this is not the end of the world. Now, what's really, really sad about this is the fact that she thought that bringing her kids into this was necessary. I get it if you think that you're, you know, the world's going to end, but the fact that you just killed a child is despicable, gross, heinous on so many levels, and this person should have gotten help rather than they shouldn't have been. And I also just want to point out one thing: this person was described by Refinery Twenty Nine, which is an article, and she was literally like known for some things for being. A, this is what Refinery Twenty Nine had to say about Miss Johnson. Had a brilliant gift for calling out the nonsense of any son in need of real truths. And she was offering services for self-help and healing for $2.99. Now, hot take. Anybody that's not a professional or has a degree or anything should not be offering self-help to anybody. You don't know what you're talking about. And I also think the people that believe in the crystal frou-frou shit, there's something deeper than that. I'm sorry to break it to anybody that believes in crystals and everything like that, but it's not real. It's not based in science. I have not seen any proof. Somebody has proof. Link it in chat. But it isn't. And it's really, really sad that these people get caught up in this whirlwind where they think it's real and they sacrifice their families. What do you think about it? Like, this I, blew my mind when I read that she threw them on the freeway in L.A. L.A. traffic is insane. And I, I don't want to show the video. There's a video, but that's too graphic. I don't think anybody should see a video of that. Mm -hmm. But this person is heinous. Yeah, I, when I read that story, and it's... The sad thing is, it's not the first time I've ever heard of something like this. And the thing is, okay, so when it comes down to the eclipse, right? Anybody that says that this was predicted in the Bible is full of shit, okay? Because... I don't believe in any of that shit. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. It's fine. It, it's fine. But, like, before the Christians landed in South America, the Aztecs... Or the Mayans or whoever, I can't, I'm getting my culture and stuff. They, they, were, they were great in astronomy. They knew how the solar system worked. They could predict eclipses. They could predict all these things. And they actually used that, that knowledge, right, to, like, plan to crop the harvest and whatnot. They were very intelligent, right? And then you got these schmucks coming over here on the ships telling them, hey, you need to convert to Christianity and shit like that. It's, it's absurd. And the fact that people still have not taken the time to realize that this is just a some once in a lifetime for people. Exactly. I love stuff like this. And the fact that people are using this is like the end times are coming. It's time to do horrible things. It's like you fear mongering. Asshole. Really fear mongering. Yep. And it's just like when you got certain people like Marjorie Trader Green talking about how this was predicting in revelations. This was earthquakes. Listen, earthquakes are always fucking happening. If you're on a fault line, you're gonna have a goddamn earthquake, okay? Not just so the, because they thought the one in New York was like something crazy. We had one in Virginia, like 2011. This isn't the first one we've had. They're yeah. rare, they happen. Yeah. I mean, but this is not caused for the end of the world, okay? And I just, it's just despicable when people bring in their children and just sacrifice other people. Like, it's disgusting. This lady must have. Like the fact that this website Refinery Twenty Nine, which is a known art, which is a known website that has all these like articles and everything, was calling this person like knowing how to suss out the bullshit in twenty sixteen, offering self help lessons. I honestly think that people that do not have degrees or knowledge should not be offering these services, and I think it should be illegal if you are known to be found offering self help services when you do not possess any of those degrees. It is scamming. It is hard. It's it's fear mongering. It's playing on people's fears and vulnerabilities. It's dis it's scamming. It's disgusting, and it should be illegal. Yeah. And I stand on that. No, no, I I agree because like, if there's one thing that bothers the fuck out of me is you get these, you know, especially social media. Social media is known for this. You've got people out there that say, "I am the person that you need to listen to. Don't listen to these doctors." Don't listen to these people that spent eight years of their fucking life and thousands upon thousands of dollars to learn this shit. Listen to me. I know what I'm talking about. Don't listen to these. Uh, if you've got mental health issues, just go. Joe Rogan. Life. It's like go listen to the Joe Rogan experience to learn about what to take when you get COVID. No, you listen to a professional. I'm sorry. Exactly. Yep. Like. No, no. I, I say I used to listen to Joe Rogan because he actually had interesting guests on, like when he brought yeah. up the Scientologist guy. I thought that was a fascinating thing. That was a fascinating episode, but like, I don't listen to people if they don't have the fucking credentials, okay? I, I, th there's a reason as, like, for example, 
you know, this is, I don't want to get too far out, out in the weeds on something like this, but like when you've got people, right, that are saying that are, just for example, right, you got these Alpha Chad bros that always go to the gym and they like to, they like to, you know, trash people that, you know, might be a little bit larger. This is, I want to go to that person, call them a fat piece. Okay, first off, he's like, well, I see this guy say, it's like, okay. That person you're talking about is probably a certified trainer, and they have a way of helping people by not degrading them and treating them like shit. So a woman that says, she sees into the crystals. She sees, and she just helps everybody. I'm sorry. No, okay? She might never be seen any study that proves that that's real. Mm -hmm. Like Exactly. The thing is, if you have a study, show me the study. Show me that those crystals and all that works, but it doesn't. There's not one, and it's despicable how these people are preying on people like that. Yeah, and it's just like... They'll say, oh, studies can be skewed and altered. Well, show me something to, to counter it. Go through it. so many different steps. And they have to go through so many peer review different steps. Yeah. A study like doesn't happen just from one sample. You have to have so many different samples for to make a study. It's not just one time, one thing. You have to produce the same result. Yep. It's and I don't know. What do you think about the fact that she brought her children onto the freeway and threw out her children? Like, the fact that these people bring in their children. Like, what is... That nine-year-old child is going to have trauma for the rest of their life. I don't care what The rest of their is. life. The rest of their life. And that is... It's and on the internet. That doesn't help that it's on the internet, yeah. too. And that child is going to be reminded about that because, you know, that child's going to wonder, why Why did this happen? You know, why me? And it's just like, did my mother af actually love me? And, you know, that's that's the thing that some this child might wonder. And it's just, you know... Children remember things like this. These are these are memories that are forever imprinted upon you, and something like that is gonna fuck that child up for for life. Because uh, was the I can't remember was the boyfriend like the father or no? I don't know if he was the father. I can double check. But mm -hmm. the fact that what I read when there was that it was just her boyfriend. It said she butchered her boyfriend. So yeah, um, that's just craziness. But the really sad part is that when you hear that the, the nine-year-old was clutching her baby sibling in their hands when they were thrown out the car. Yeah. Imagine, like, I just think of the, like, the fact that the baby died in their arms, which yeah. is so sad. Yeah, I, I can't imagine what she's going through, and I just, you know, whatever happens to her, I just hope that, you know, she finds a good home where they, like, they're, she's going to need to go to a home where they're going to comfort her and just, like... Therapy. And, and love her and take her to therapy. I, I, I'm telling everybody right now, therapy is helpful. I'm a 41 year old man. Oh, I've I gone believe to therapy. in therapy completely. Yeah. I've gone to therapy. I'm. I wouldn't say I'm like a tough guy, but I've seen some fucked up shit, and I can tell you, therapy helps. If you're not getting help from a therapist, find another one. But like, I, I, I want that child to get as much help as possible. And yeah, I, I agree. Something like this. So, okay. Before we wrap up this topic, I was just reading again the article. It had stated in the article that the child had witnessed the mom slaying the boyfriend, which is another added layer of trauma. Oh, boy. Yeah. The, you know, and the thing is, like, with stuff like that, uh, PTSD can come in many forms. Uh, this could affect the way the child sees knives. Or ever or, affected. Yeah, or, or ever affected. It could possibly even be a, um, what's it called? A, uh, probably not be a, a um, what's it called? probably be a vegetarian or a vegan for the rest of her life. I mean, something like this could be very traumatic for them, you know, but it's just, I can't imagine what she's going through at this point. Very sad story. It's very sad. So, um, you ready to move on to the next topic? Yep. This one, the next one. And when I read this, I was like, yep. I, I hear you. So, uh, just, just do a quick response. Uh, thanks Manny. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, my Apple talks times. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, Jay from Project VO Pod. Uh, I did send you a message, but I did respond to you on Twitter. You just need to take a look at it. Um, I t uh, Jay, I told you like Tuesdays are a difficult time for me, but well, you and I will talk offline about it. So uh, I promise you, you and I can have a debate. So, um, all right. So next topic. Social media was in an absolute firestorm when a hunter by the name of Cody Roberts from Daniel, Wyoming, posed for pictures with a wolf. A young wolf, mind you, that he allegedly saw while he was snowballing, snowmobiling. He chased it down to the point of it being exhausted, ran its back legs over, crippling it, taped its mouth shut, took it back to town, paraded it to his friends at the local bar. Then he tortured it some more, and then he took it out to the parking lot and shot it dead. Now, 
Where he found the wolf was a region called the Predator Zone, which wolves actually can be pursued with a snowmobile build and killed, which I think is ludicrous, okay? Um, since the pictures hit the internet, uh, the majority of his family has deactivated their social media accounts and removed their contact information because they were doxxed, okay? Which I understand, okay? The family should not be attacked whatsoever for this person's fuck up, but that's, that's beyond this point. Now, some of his family members, however, have made excuses that eh, he was just drinking and he's, he's made a mistake, all right? Okay, listen, all right? I have done stupid shit in my day. In San Antonio, I was shit-faced in a bar, and after using the bathroom, I saw a paper towel dispenser, and I proceeded to punch the dog shit out of it for no fucking reason whatsoever. Why? I don't know to this day. Now, but this is something totally different, okay? We don't condone when a man gets drunk behind the wheel and hits another person and kills somebody. We don't say, oh, he got drunk, he made a mistake. We don't condone when someone gets drunk and rapes another person. You know, alcohol is not an excuse for being cruel. I do not give a shit. How drunk he might have been. What he did was monstrous. Now, I find it troubling that someone could chase Animal down with a snowmobile and just run it over, but that's apparently legal. Now, if you can't hit the broadside of a building on a snowmobile like with a gun, maybe you should just let the wolf go or some shit like that, right? Now, if this guy is willing to do this to a wolf, I can only imagine what else he would be willing to do to somebody else. Now, what really got under my skin was finding out that his penalty was $250. That's it. Now, a petition that has had over 100,000 signatures has been going around, and that something more severe needs to be done, which, update, I found out today, um, they're actually going to launch another investigation into this. Uh, they're going to find out more, but nothing else has come of this so far, but more people are going to be investigating this. And, you know, before I turn it over to you, I just want everybody to know, I think that if you are cruel to animals, I mean, it's, it's bad enough that we got people that are cruel to other people, but if you're cruel to animals, you're a fucked up individual. I mean, hell, I just read a story, um, I shared it on my Facebook, about a woman who needed her horse to be trained to like ride on a saddle and stuff like that. So she sent this horse off to a clinic for four months, and then the person who ran the clinic let the horse starve to death, practically, to the point where it needed to be euthanized. I think that if you're cruel to animals, you're a fucked up individual. I, I think you're a disgusting person, period. I mean, uh, Peanut, go ahead and give me your thoughts about this, because this just it gets my blood How many thoughts I have on this? So, one, I want to ask for clarification. Was he drunk when driving the snowmobile? Yes, he was. Are y'all ready for that? Because it's operating a vehicle, DUI. Mm -hmm. Um. Also, the fact that they have a zone where you're allowed to chase down animals and snowmobiles and kill them is disturbing to me. The fact that this guy paraded this animal around like a trophy, even more disturbing. This is animal abuse. This is torture. This is beyond disgusting, beyond the pale. He should be in prison. I don't want to say for life, but for many years. The two thousand, the two hundred fifty dollar fine is laughable. That's what about a fine. You get more of a fine for parking in a handicap zone than you do for that. Mm -hmm. And he like did something disgusting. Um, I think the guy needs to go to jail. Like actually, and I think that area needs to be revisionized or reworked or whatever. Because the fact that you can, like, chase animals on a snowmobile and kill them. I also, I'm going to be honest, I'm not a fan of people that hunt for sport. I think it's disturbing. What is the need to kill an animal if you're not eating it? Mm -hmm. What is the need for that? It's, like, I understand there's also people that, I understand there's population control when you are hunting animals. Because they're also, they eat other, whatever. That's not the same as hunting for sport. I think hunting for sport is disgusting. I think it's cruel. I think it's unneeded. Um, I think this guy really needs to serve jail time, and I'm happy that there's an organization that's stepping up and saying, hey, this guy needs to be looked at, because this is not right. When I read this, I was disgusted, because it's like, you know, when you think about you have pets, too, when you think about what happens when your pets get killed, it's really sad, you know? And there, these are accidents, like, when, like, my pet got killed, it was an accident. But this person was maliciously hunting this wolf, and for, like, honey... Ugh. And the family was like, well, he was, if he was drunk and driving a snowmobile, that's a DUI. That's a, that's a, a vehicle. Like, you can't just not, you, know, I, you can't just drive a vehicle like that. Like, it's like riding a forklift, whatever. You should be going to jail for that. Like, that's a, already in jail. And whoever's administration, whatever county this is, shame on them for not doing their proper job. And shame on the police department, too. Because, you know what, I was reading this article and they're talking about how there's actual, this guy actually committed animal cruelty laws, or whatever, they were talking, let me find what I was saying, they said that he violated some, like, animal cruelty law, I think. Um, 
the people were talking about, like, there's an animal cruelty law that maybe he broke because it's, like, maliciously on purpose killing an animal for, like, the enjoyability or whatever. Yep. Or something like that. Let me find it. Paid the fine, whatever. Um, basically, it said that the, stat the state agency contended the animal cruelty statutes don't apply to predatory species. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What? Like, it's still animal cruelty regardless. Yeah. Well, and, and you know, what's... I think should be shamed. Named and shamed. Yeah. I mean, doxing, I don't, I'm not for, but I don't understand. It, I've never been a fan of hunting for sport. It's disgusting to me, especially when you see people on social media and they go to the Africa and they have pictures of the zebras that they've killed. Mm -hmm. Why? Yeah. Why? Yeah. I, I, I don't know. What do, you, what, do you, what do you think about that? I think it's disgusting, well, honestly. We all remember the story of Michael Vick that had dog yeah, that's fighting. What I was, yep. Yep. Yeah, that it was... Yeah, he, he went to prison for two years, and he was a celebrity, right? Any other Joe Schmo probably would have gotten a harsher penalty, but he went to prison. Now, I'm not saying I forgive Michael Vick. This is a really hard thing because I'm a dog person. I love animals as well, but like, you got to be a sick, twisted person. And like, the thing is, like, Michael Vick is paying his penance consistently, right? He works with dog organizations and stuff like that. He's trying to make things ends meet. Now, it's again, I'm not going to forgive him for stuff like that. It's just, it's not for me to forgive, essentially. But this guy, a, a two hundred fifty dollar fine is a fucking joke. It's a Stop fucking a joke. Risk. It, you get more, like I said, you pay more for a freaking parking and handicap. Yep, yeah, it, it really is, and you know, it's just there's something sick and twisted in a person's head to do something like that, especially. And you know, it's it's like I said, I mean, we see people do cruel things to humans all the time, right? But I just think there's something extra twisted when you do it to an animal, right? And it's just because like when some, you think. Of Mm -hmm. Sorry to cut you off real quick, it's but okay. when you think about this, like serial killers, they start from animals and then they devolve into humans. So it starts somewhere. It, it always does. It always does start somewhere, and that that's why it's it's important for people to understand. Like this is not something you just you know slap on the wrist. This is not something you can just like eh, he was just drunk. You know, boys will be boys, guys will be guys. No, I'm sorry, I don't give a shit. It starts somewhere. Drunk should be a bigger punishment. The fact that he was drunk should be a bigger punishment. And the fact that they didn't arrest him for being drunk while operating a vehicle blows my mind. Because mm -hmm. you're supposed... You can't you can't operate a vehicle. Like, they don't they even... I've seen... Okay, cops might not be the most realistic. I've seen them pull over people on cops and on bicycles and being drunk and they get arrested. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. A vehicle. A snowmobile is a high-speed vehicle. Yep. I, I, oh yeah, absolutely. and it has like it's it's not like a bike like you can like it it's there's a lot of machinery involved. It's not a bicycle. It's not like a twenty pound bike, you know. Plus, there's another thing we're taking this consideration too. It's like the fact that you know he also was like in possession of a you know a firearm while intoxicated as well. That's also a danger as well. There there's a lot of things that it's just it, there's no so the much police did their diligence and actually like I would really like to know besides the fine what else the police did if they did their diligence. When they're supposed to follow protocol, so, like, do you know if they like arrested him or anything for like the being drunk or anything? I, I'm not sure. If you know I don't think it. they did, but I think like the the person that wrote the two hundred fifty dollar fine wasn't even a police officer. It was like a park ranger or but, something like that. It was like somebody. This probably, oh, I see how. Okay. Yep. So this, they probably never even alerted the police that this happened. Like it may they may have. But I'm sure when the commissioner found out, he was not happy. Yep. Well, a lot of the police that are in that county are saying they didn't know anything about it until social media was. Mm -hmm. you That's know, why what? I said the commissioner probably wasn't happy. Yeah. And I yeah. think park rangers, mm -hmm. when they do have this kind of case, they're supposed to report to the police. Yeah. I think. It's supposed to, yeah. But I think it's just because it, it was kind of like swept because there was no pictures. It, it's sort of like the same story. Like it, you know, I'm not like trying to compare to animals, but like if it's not recorded. It's just something that can get swept under the rug if there's no like video if evidence. Falls to the forest and it doesn't make a sound or whatever that saying is. Yeah, absolutely, but nobody there to hear it or whatever. Exactly. Well, the guy, the guy posed, but well, nobody could have taken his blood alcohol level at the time. Yep. So basically, it was a poor and very poor investigation. And at this rate, they probably got a lot the the um brass or whatever they fucking call it probably mm -hmm. slammed them for it. Sure. Absolutely. But everyone's saying, oh, I didn't know he did this. Like, even the bar owner that was there says, oh, I didn't know he was drunk at the time. I didn't know he tortured the animals. Your job as a bar owner to tell somebody when to stop. Get cut as off. a bartender. Yeah. Exactly. You're cut off kind of deal. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it's, it's things like that. It's just like, you know, this is, it's fucked up as a football bat. That's what I usually say. That's that's how fucked up things like this are. But, you know, and kind of going back and like, we, we kind of touched on this a little bit. 
the guy definitely should pay for his crimes. But the family is off limits, okay? The, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know if they've been harassed. I hope they haven't been harassed. But the fact of the matter is, it's like, unless they were partaking the activities, like the, 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 the consenting adults were partaking, then leave the rest of the family out of it, okay? They, they, it was just him. He's the only person that should be to blame, essentially. And, but it's just, I feel like our society has a tendency to just be too group reactionary. Everybody, when some one person makes a big mistake, they yeah. group everybody in it. And yeah. it's like, you know, like on the internet, like, you know, like, the, you're like, I'm not going to dox you. I'm just going to call your mom's work and harass the fuck out of them. Yeah. Like, they don't, like, It's like a like a group mentality almost like you if I'm wrong it's my it's my and they were it so it doesn't yeah sorry you just kind of cut out for a little second there did you what part did you not hear uh just that last couple bits right there oh i said that like basically like if i do something wrong they're like i'm not gonna dox you i'm gonna call your mom's work and harass her job instead yep. yeah and it becomes an issue where it's like, if I do something wrong, you want to involve everybody around me yep. to make my life worse. Yep. And know, it's like, these people didn't do anything. And, and the thing is, like, people do it over the pettiest reasons, too. Like, even an argument online, people would dox you. People would contact your oh, yeah. wife, which is so fucking stupid. Listen, if somebody gets the better of me in an argument or a debate, I'm not going to get all bent it's out of shape. Thing. I'm not going to call your place of business. That's That's pansies do shit like that i'm sorry i'm not gonna call your place of business i i'm not a little snowflake i'm a grown-ass fucking man okay i can take the, the humiliation okay i can take the internet drama you know if i do poorly, love out button. exactly like I, I can take it i can handle it okay i'm not gonna call somebody's place of business just because like and, and everybody needs to be more mature about it but the, the internet makes things too easy for us it makes it way too easy it's kind of like what Mike Tyson said. It's like the internet makes it so easy where people don't get punched in the mouth anymore. But like, yeah. uh, but it's just like, I, I really think it's important that like a penalty does have to come down on this dude. He has to pay oh, yeah. some penalty. I think it needs to be jail time. I think, in my yeah. opinion, jail time. Absolute jail time. And I think he's not going to be sorry that he did it. He's going to be sorry that he got caught and he's now have an answer for it. Yeah, that's how it usually goes. They're not sorry they did it. They're sorry they caught. It happens every single time. Absolutely. So, but um, I think we kind of like uh, hit this nail on the head right there. Um, what, what's your uh, final topic for the evening? A little bit of a doozy. I think everybody remembers the overturn of Roe v. Wade that happened, and so which left it up to the state to decide banning abortions or not. And so Arizona is the latest one to try and make a decision on this. I'm going to um, first talk about. So basically, they've said prepare to um, reinstate this old law. I'm going to say what the law is. The 1864 abortion ban, and it goes, and this is what it says. A person who provides supplies or administers to a pregnant woman or procures such woman to take any medicine, drugs, or substance, or uses or employs any instrument or other means, whatever, with intent thereby to procure the miscarriage of such woman, unless it is necessary to save her life, shall be punished by imprisonment in the state prison for not less than two years, nor more than five years. So basically, saying that if you help somebody um, get an abortion that doesn't, you know, that's not needed to save life, you will go to jail. And when I was researching this topic, I really saw a bunch of different comments from other people. I saw Kamala Harris say that, you know, this is like a Trump thing, blaming Trump for this. And then I saw another article saying that Trump was like, this is not good. So you never know what these sources and what they say, but Kamala Harris, apparently Kamala Harris is not happy with this. But as I said, it's up to the states now, you know, to decide this. But this is a big issue because a lot of people just don't like the fact that when they have these abortion bans, it doesn't rule out incest, rape, et cetera, et cetera. And so that doesn't, that, that creates a big, giant issue for people, I think. I'm one of those people that I am for abortions, but I think that if they ban abortions, there should be certain cases where you can't get an abortion. Incest, rape, not, it's not going to viable pregnancy, et cetera. You know, um... But a lot of these articles that I'm reading, BBC, AP Newsweek, et cetera, et cetera, are saying that they are saying that it is going to be likely passed that this will, this law will come into effect again. And it reminds me of that other state, I can't remember which one, where there are doctors who already got sent to jail for helping a woman get a abortion. And so I think that with Roe v. Wade, we knew that this was a time matter that, you know, it wasn't going to stay like this forever. But I think that we were too lazy 
to focus on other things to nail down this thing. And now it just became a bigger mess. And so it's a big deal in Arizona right now. A lot of people are unhappy, rightfully so. Um, and I know Kamala Harris is really just um, not happy about it. But let me find out exactly what she said about Trump so I'm not talking on my ass. Mm-hmm. She said she blames Trump, according to the BBC. She blames Trump for their uh, strict abortion law. But um, correct me if I'm wrong. Hasn't Arizona always been red? It has been, but they have a uh, they voted blue uh, in the last election, primarily okay. because the reason why is because uh, you know Trump was talking bad about John McCain, and that did not go over well. <laughs> so mm-hmm. Arizona went blue in the last election. Okay, well, yeah, so Kamala Harris is blaming Trump for this, and I read somewhere, let me see, Trump. So he did actually say it um, on camera. He said, this is, Arizona got it wrong. Yeah, it went wrong. So there's a lot of whose fault is it. I think it comes down to the state. But I think this is a big issue right now is because a lot of access to abortion is a big deal in our country right now. I think it's bigger than, you know, bills about freaking um, refrigerators, et cetera, et cetera. I don't know how you feel on it, but I think that, you know, it, it's a tricky subject to talk about for certain people. You know, I am for abortion, like I said earlier, but I think that if you can't get one and it's banned, there should be exceptions. I think rape, incest, unviable pregnancy some and i do want to and there is a misconception about a misconception about abortions that people can get them at like nine months and stuff that's not true and it's a narrative that people continue to push around and it's not true you cannot get a pregnant an abortion when you're about to deliver the baby that's not happening it yeah. isn't yeah well okay so i am also pro-choice all right and i had a debate about this about a couple years ago didn't go well for me but that's okay it is what it is um but the thing is, like, when it comes down to the topic of abortion, those of us that are pro-choice, it's not so much that we're pro-abortion, we just believe that a woman has a right to choose, right? And the majority of the time, the majority of the abortions that take place happen in the first trimester. And this is like when they first find out that they're pregnant and they don't want the pregnancy anymore. Now, people could say, oh, well, you know what? They should have thought about that before opening the legs. Well, that's such a lengthy time. Yep. There are women who have gotten pregnant from protection yep. and birth control. Yep. So... so Yep. And, you know, then you got people says, oh, abstinence. OK, so let, let's come to understand about something. How many times have you heard a story about a guy that charms a woman out of her pants and then bails on her and never speaks to her again? Happens all the time. You know, it's just it, it's it's just how things are. OK, but like usually when abortions happen, like later on down the line, it's not because it's out of spite. It's because by this point, they've already chosen the name. They've gotten the clothes. They've gotten the carriage. They've gotten everything right. But then they get the worst news of their entire life that their pregnancy is no longer viable. Katie Cox is a great story in Texas. She had to leave the state of Texas to get the procedure done. And I think she I remember that lady. Yep. I think I remember her. Now, I don't I don't know if she ever returned back to Texas because out of fear for her life, but like Texas, Missouri, states like that are making it difficult. Now, if people say, oh, well, you know, they could just go to another state. Do you have any idea how expensive it is to fucking thing. move? How un- impractical it really is? And a little on the fact that, you know, you hear these gun people say that, well, if you outlaw guns, then criminals are just going to get guns too. The same thing happens with abortions. You know, my mother told me a story, but she knew a woman in college. She was raped, right? And this is before, like, you know, she could actually get an abortion. She had to get a back alley one and something was horrible. Coat hanger? I don't know if that's a coat hanger. I can't remember how she described to me, but, like, the woman got the, uh, the procedure done, but there was an infection. She could no longer get pregnant again. All because mm-hmm. somebody else, you know, decided to take advantage of her. And it's just, and it's a horrible thing. And it becomes it, a bigger problem when you ban something that literally, people get the, they go to the extreme. They have to get, the, you know, the bad one to yep. go other places. Yep. And it's not easy to travel as a pregnant woman. Yep. I'm sure it's not easy. It, it, it isn't. And it, it's it, in like little the fact that there's no guarantee that you're going to get seen. And you have a, if you have a also, job. If yep. somebody finds out and they snip. Did you hear about this? That if somebody finds out, they can snitch on you and get money for that? Yep, I've heard about that. I think that. it was Texas that did that. Yep, that's... If you, like, I think it was Texas. Like, let's say I got an abortion and, like, I told Mary Sue, Mary Sue put on me. She'd get money for that, and I'd go to jail. It's handmaiden's tale all over again. in Texas that are in jail for giving abortions. Yeah, and, you know, it's like... It's wild. Well, and then they want to talk about people in jail for marijuana and stuff like that. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, going to that bit about the whole late term abortion, like, you know, Donald Trump, like, spread that conspiracy theory about the governor from Virginia said, basically, you can give birth to the oh, child. Okay. And, yeah, yeah. And he says, and then they'll decide whether to execute the baby. That's not what it is. That's not what it is. What it is, is, is if the mom, if the mother gives birth to the baby and the baby is on the verge of death, basically. And if they decide, Sacrifice. it's exactly, like you have yeah. to decide if you want your baby to die or do you yeah. want them to be yeah. like when or, you have people cheer babies and like just saying in the Nikki for the rest of their life or, you know, and the life support. It's what happens when you have an older relative exactly. who's about to die and they're on life support. It's you pull the plug because yeah. you know what? It's harm. It's not. There's no good like state of life at that point. It's not good for them. They're suffering. Yep. When you put down animals that are suffering, it's all the same thing. People aren't choosing. All right, I gave birth to this baby. I want it to die right now. No, the baby's gonna die. You probably might. You might have even given birth to it premature, and the likelihood of survival is slim. And yep. you know what? You don't want that baby to suffer for however long they have. Yep, exactly. And that, that's what people need to understand. It, you know, and I. So th there's a person I've talked to. I've had her on the show before too. Um, she's she's left leaning, but she's pro life. But she's actually very practical. It's because she feels like if there was more programs to actually take care of expecting mothers, you know, it would probably decrease the chances of like you know them having the abortion. If there's like safety nets for them to fall onto, you know, it's very practical. It's very pragmatic. You know, you hear bullshit about people saying like you know. I've I've heard this from somebody before. Like I and I talked about, you know, right now, twenty four, you know, I'm financially, mentally not ready to have a baby. And I think not everybody who has like it's not easy to raise children. If you don't have money to have children, then it's like, what are you supposed to do? Like, you know, you can get you can have a baby, you can put them up for adoption, whatever, or you can have an abortion. Like there's choices that you make. Mm -hmm. And the fact that people get angry at you when you say, I can't financially support this child, I think it's better for just because I found, like, it, it also costs money to be pregnant. It's not cheap to be pregnant. Like, it's not. Yep. And the thing is, is that people think it's like, you know, you don't change anything. No, there's a lot of different things you have to go through when you're pregnant. You pay for the visits, et cetera, et cetera. People don't have money like that. It's not cheap. It's not easy. And it's really, it's harmful when people say, well, you know what? You're selfish. You're horrible. The fact that you aborted this baby because you couldn't afford to have this baby. No, I think it's practical it's mature to be like hey listen i can't have this baby i got pregnant on accident i did all the right steps but i still got pregnant this is the thing i have to do and you know what i want to say this one major thing abortion is not easy on anybody people sometimes who get abortions cannot have babies ever again it is traumatic a clump comes out of your vagina it's not like um nothing goes away you still you have fetus Mm -hmm. it's traumatizing like sure. and there's this notion that like people make is this easy choice it's not easy it isn't easy yep. having children isn't easy yep. you know and i think that i would rather somebody who says listen i got pregnant i follow the means i use protection whatever but i can't afford it. i need to get an abortion okay you know what you're doing what's best for you best for the sanct sanctity of that child that if you did have that child you would have to put them in adoption foster care foster also Foster care is not great. It is not a great system. People are traumatized from foster care. They can't even find foster families that, like, there are people that are in foster care families for the money. They're not there for the kids. I think of the Toppin family. Toppin family. Oh, not the Toppin family. Um, it, they didn't it, have foster care. The, 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 the Turpin family, they had 15 children, yes. The Jordan Turpin. She, were she's, they foster kids? No, they were all their children. Okay, now, there's another family that, there are families that do get foster kids for the money, and then they, like, Damage those those kids. Those kids yep. are whole, like. Well, yeah. Well, the oh, I'm sorry. To, I'm sorry to rant, but well, it's just it's like okay. this. People think it's an easy decision to get an abortion, and it isn't. Like it's especially like think about it. Being a single parent isn't easy for anybody, and the fact that let's say, well, also think about. Let's well, say I get I pregnant, and, and the father of my child dies. You really think I want to raise a baby of a dead guy of a dead father? Mm -hmm. That's hard. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's... So there's so many complex scenarios and that goes into it. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm pro I'm pro choice. Mm -hmm. But I'm not pro choice to the where it's like, hey, I just don't want to have a kid. I'm just gonna take an abortion. Mm -hmm. Like I think that's really lazy. I think that's immature. I think that's really, you know, just not right. The people that you know, just the people that don't use protection and they're like, I got pregnant. I don't want to have a kid. I'm gonna get an abortion. Mm -hmm. I think people should be using protection if they don't want children. Yep. I know it's not always guaranteed, 
But abortions are not like this, like, plan B pill. They're not. Yeah. I think that people that misuse them are disgusting. And if they're used the right way, then I have no issues. Yep, I agree. Um, what, what's, what's sad about the Turpin family is that, like, those that were actually able to, you know, carry on, um, their other siblings got adopted out of the foster homes, and they actually got treated worse. They were horrible. Yep. And they were horrible yep. in there, yeah. Yep. The, and there's 400,000 plus children that are in the uh, in the foster care system right now. 400,000 plus. I just want to grow out of it and have no money, no home, no education. Where do you go? Yep. They, like, they, what? they have the ch highest chance of going into crime, too, because they have no... Yeah. Drugs, yeah, so crime. Exactly. And it, this is why it's a very, very complicated subject, honestly. And, you know, like, it, it, it's a very practical disposition to say, listen, if, if it's just because you can't do it, yeah, it's not an easy decision to make, but it's just, and you know, you, you'll hear people that are pro-life say, oh, what are you trying to say, that the people in the foster care system should just be dead? No, we're not saying that because they're already alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're, they're already alive, okay? We're not trying to say, kill those children now, okay? I'm simply saying it's just like, what can you do to make things better, okay? And because like, it, it is difficult. I have no doubt. And like, well, the reason I bring this up is it's easy for somebody like me to have an opinion on this, right? I feel everybody can have an opinion about it, but I'm not the one that has to live with the consequences, right? I could go out tomorrow, you know, still married, <laughs> just saying, but like, and I could go out, find a woman tomorrow, get her pregnant, bail, and never have to see that child. And if she gets told, nope, you have to have that child, she has to go through that, and she'll probably know, we'll never ever see me again. It's never going to happen, Claire. I'm sorry. It's never going to happen, okay? I'm not going to go fucking random women, you know? But it's just an example. I mean, like me, like, I literally, that would happen, like, and it's, like, you know, your husband or whatever, whoever you're with dies, and you have, like, a baby. Like, some people cannot deal with the, that's also traumatic, some people cannot deal with that. Yeah. Like, when you, the thing is that people, I think, on the, I'm, I'm going to say the right, GOP, whatever, are concerned about is they think people, the people that, the majority of people that get these abortions are doing it because, hey, I got pregnant with this guy I met on Tinder. I don't want to be with him. I'm just going to get an abortion and have sex with him the next day. Majority of those people that are getting, those are not the majority of abortions. They're not. And it's like this thing that they think in their head. There's people that cannot have children because it's not viable for them. Yep. Not financially. There are people who literally use protection and get pregnant still. Like, it happens. It happens quite frequently. Yep. You know? And there are people, you know, like, maybe a one-night stand. But you know what? One mistake should not alter you for not determine the rest of your life. And I say that for a lot of things. And this person that made one-night stand, whatever, and they realize, hey, I cannot afford to have this child okay but there are people who have what i stands and make it work they do yeah so yeah. it's not always mm -hmm. you know you, it, you can't be it's not having children is not for people that don't have money exactly it's not easy it's not cheap yeah. i don't have kids i can't imagine myself having kids right now if i had kids right now i'd be i'd be the worst i'd be irresponsible immature mm -hmm. like it's just yep takes a lot you know, yeah. and people see the abortion is like just this issue that like people are doing willy nilly, and they're like, and then they want, and then the issue comes is now they want to like states want to ban birth control. It's like, what do you want us to do? Mm -hmm. Ban birth control in my state of Virginia, and they said no, you can't do that. We need birth. Like you want us not to get abortions, but you're not going to let us have contraception like that. Like, what do you want from us? It's all about control as far as I'm concerned. It's really what it is. Honestly, I'm going to be honest with you. I think most of the abortion stuff is religiously motivated. Yeah. I think because some of these people that are might be Christian, whatever the fuck, and they say, can't get an abortion, it's in the Bible. It's religiously motivated. I honestly think so. I don't think it's from a pragmatic state of mind. Because if these people were pragmatic and realized there's multi-layers, they'd realize, oh, okay, I see. But if they're looking at their, like, you know, their scripture and saying, you cannot do that. That's God's chosen child. The people that are like, God, you put up here on this earth to have more children. And I also think people, you know, I think it's a religiously motivated thing. I honestly do. <laughs> well, the person I talked to told you about that was, like, pro-life person. She also said that, like, if men could get pregnant, they would make it as easy as possible for men to get abortions. And I think she's correct. Like, they, it would be like... They would have like a, a, a beer tent or they would like have a video game no hall. Time to the clinic. Yeah. And the fact that these women that do have to go get abortions because are uh, when they go get the abortions, they go to these as it is, and then they have people standing outside berating them. Yep. 
Have you seen those videos? Yeah, it, it, they're, they're called pre uh, abortions, but the, it's like the crisis pregnancy centers. And what they do is they have vans, and they will actually bring you in and give you a free ultrasound. And they'll actually send out a message that says, hi, mom, to manipulate you into keeping that baby. But these same people will say, okay, so we are not a charity clinic. So once we will help them out for the first six months, but then they're on their own, which is horrendous. Even people going to Planned Parenthood and they have people processing outside, they're getting like free resources and stuff like that. And they have like no abortions of the signs. They're picketing outside the abortion clinic and it's disgusting. Yep, it is. And you know, like it, it's, it's covered on the first amendment. They're allowed to do that. And I don't have to agree with to it. Do it. Yep, yep. I don't have to agree with it though. It's that simple. Right. And, and, and just, you know, there's a book that I think people should read. It's, it really kind of dives into like the abortion care system. No, the foster care system. I'm sorry. It's called Hope's Boy. It's based on a true story. The guy that wrote the book, that's his story. And his mother's name was Hope. And what it was is she had him when she was very young and she got into drugs, abusive relationships and stuff like that. And he ended up in the foster care system, right? And he basically talks about like what life was like for him in the foster care system and that there was actually a family he got adopted into and it was the family that he graduated high school and college from, right? And the mother um, just did it to get more money, right? Because you get good tax write-offs and you get paid. That's what I was saying. Yep. These people that just yep. get the foster kids because of the money. Yep. And so, well, anyway, so she picked on him because he was the child that took it the most. She would pick on him. She would berate him. She would slap him around, stuff like that. And when they brought another kid in, you know, this kid was thinking, oh, yeah, this family loves me. This is my family. This is my family. And he's like, hey, listen. This is not your family. They don't care about you. And he's like, that's not true. The kid ran away, right? He ran away for two weeks. And then when he came back, they finally found him and brought him back. They were on their way to school. He's like, why did you run away? He's like, because I thought they would actually come looking for me, and they didn't. Then that kid got rehomed to another one, and he to a different home. And it's just like, it's really fucked up. I mean, think, think of yourself. We're not letting right? these foster families good enough. We're yep. not letting them good yep. enough. Yeah. It, We're it, not it's, doing People, we have lousy. I'm gonna call them out. We have lousy social workers who are supposed to do their daily checks. They don't do them, and they don't do a thorough job. You need to. We have people that are lousy workers who are there for a paycheck, and they're not there to help people. Yep. And you know what? We need to get the fuck out because you know what? This is disgusting. Mm -hmm. It's not helping our people. No. We want to help our country. We want a great country. We're not helping our country. We're making our country shit. Mm -hmm. Okay. You need people doing these checks that are doing the right thing. They know what to look for. I can think of one per where social services fucked up was Gabriel Gonzalez, that little boy that would get beat up by his parents where they killed him and social services was supposed to be doing their checkups and they never did. Yeah. He got killed by his family. Yeah. And, it, and you know, it, I, I'm sorry, we're kind of I'm not like... Sure you know who Gabriel Gonzalez is. Yeah. It's, it's a really horrible story. And I, I wasn't smiling about that, but it's just like... Um, because like people think, is this a topic about foster care? But it's all tied together, honestly, because people, oh, foster yeah. care, abortion, adoption, yeah. all it's, of it. it's all tied together. Cause like, Oh, I'm sure a family out there would be glad to adopt that. Oh, I'm sure you could be right, but there's no guarantee that that child's going to have a good life. And again, we're not advocating that child be killed or something like that. It's, it's too late. When okay. that child is born, there's nothing more to I be done. Adoptions are different than public one, yeah. yeah. like a public or whatever you go through an agency. Yep. When you go through those agencies and stuff like that, like. People choose the kid and whatever. If it's like you're not going through an agency and it's just like the kid gets born and they have nowhere to go and they go to like whatever, like it's different. Then you have people that are doing private adoptions to these agencies and they're paying eight thousand dollars to adopt a kid and it's going to a good home. Yep. Like you, that, that doesn't happen to every kid. Yep, it doesn't. There, there, there are no guarantees, honestly. But this is why it's important. Like this is why it's such a hot button issue, honestly. And this is why, like, you know, in 2022. Um, what was it? Was it when twenty? Yeah, it was twenty twenty two when the Supreme Court ruled that you know Roe v. Wade get overturned and it goes back to the states. Mm -hmm. It it scared a lot of women, honestly, because mm -hmm. you know, and I actually covered this a few a few weeks ago. Since Roe v. Wade got overturned and got sent back to the states, pregnancies due to rape increased dramatically. Fifty thousand plus rapes, pregnancies due oh, to rapes no. increased across the country. And you can't even, like that it you can't even get an abortion for that which is insane exactly which is frightening and you know like um, how do you explain to a child that hey you know i don't know your father he sexually assaulted me but you know what he might be a good guy like what the fuck do you do what what do you say to that i mean there's like 
Uh, hey, maybe you want to meet your dad? Um, I don't know your dad. He sexually assaulted me when I was walking home. How, how do you explain that, you know? How do you explain something Or incest. Like that? Oh, yeah, your dad is my dad. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's a really fucked up situation. And this is why, like, it's, it's really important that people have to understand. It's like, the you reason why... Yeah, they, look, they up, do. look up what this stuff means. Look up what abortions are that are happening. Look at what's going on. Be ed be educated, okay? Because you know what? We don't need more people on Twitter saying that people that are nine months are getting fucking abortions. It's not fucking happening, and you need to cut the narrative. It's so rare. It, it, it you know, like people love no, to. If it's the baby's killing, there are times where the baby might be killing you, exactly. and they have to take the baby out. They're exactly. not taking the baby out because they're like, you know what? I don't want to have a kid anymore. I'm it, done. It but at nine months, they have everything done. They've had everything done. The room ready, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Like. Do you know how devastating and traumatic that must be for the mother to realize she's carried this baby for nine months and she can't have this baby? Yeah. She's told all her family. She's had a baby shower. She's had, you know, um, a gender reveal. You know what? She's picked out a name. Like, yeah. there's women that it happens to them. They never have kids ever again. Their body goes through this trauma where they can't have kids ever again. Yeah. That's why stuff like this is so, so essential. And I think there's one thing that, um, that we haven't even, like, really, really uh, uh, touched upon, I think. What? Jeez, what was it? I lost it. I lost it. I lost my train of thought. You'll get it. You'll get it. I I get it eventually. But oh, like, also, I want to say for dads too. It's not just a woman thing. Mm -hmm. the, the dad's gone through this with the mom. It's traumatic for him too. I mean, yep. he has to be there to comfort her mm -hmm. when she's going through all this. Like, it's not just the one person rodeo. Having kids is not just for one person. Single parents, I give you props that you that you guys can do all that. Mm -hmm. I give you major props. But it's also when you think about, like, the dad involved and, like, the dad has to be there when the mom's delivering their uterus, the, the baby that's not going to be viable. Like, you've grown attachment to this person that you may have not met yet, but it's, they're, they're a product of you. It's, it's you. It's not just, like, mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I 100% I agree. And it's just, these, this is why it is so important. It's not like, it's not like a black and white issue. There's a lot mm -hmm. of gray area when it comes down to the discussion of like why people are pro-choice, why are people you know pro-life and stuff like that. And I know there are people out there that say, "Oh, well, it, it's it's murder." Okay, well, first off, I don't think it's murder. You, I don't you think can, it's murder either. You, you can say it's an unjust killing. You don't know that scenario. You don't know that that, that situation. And people it's are just gonna, funny to me that the people. I really want to say one. I'm sorry sure. to cut you off again. No, no, it's okay. It's funny to me that the people in the GOP who are the ones that are against it are the guys who have mistresses, and then when they get them knocked up and they they need to get an abortion, they get them right away. Yep, exactly. And you know that that's that's it's really like that's. It, I'm glad you brought that up because that was actually something I was going to bring up too. It's like the people that are the most against the abortions that are the biggest speakers. They're wealthy. They're going to be mm -hmm. able to fly their they spouses. Can get them anywhere they want. The poor people are the ones that are going to be affected by this the most. And then guess what happens? Then they have to, you know, they're not going to be able to get a job. Why? Because the job that they have doesn't have, um, you know, um, maternity leave. It doesn't have care. Oh, my God. Child care? My sister, my sister had a baby, right? It's like $1,600 a week for daycare. That's insane. And if you're late by one minute, how much is it? It's like an extra. And increase the price. Yeah. Yep. My sister was so worried about that. Like, they, there's a child tax credit you can get, right? But it's insane how much the child care cost is. You don't want us to get abortions, but then you want us to pay $1,600 a week for daycare. Mm -hmm. It's either or. Lower the daycare price, or either I can have an abortion. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's just it's it, insane. They don't. They literally don't want you to succeed to succeed in this area. They don't. Yep. And social services is bullshit. They don't do what they're supposed to do. They don't do their checkups like they're supposed to do. And that's why you have kids that are abused, and then they go abuse other people, and it becomes a system. You, and you have people hurt hurt people. You you want to hear something that's gonna like? It's just gonna get. I wouldn't say it's getting your skin, but like it's how it should be done. So. We've we've spoken about my friend uh, Mike Hilliard, right? When him and his uh fiance or uh, wife had guy? yeah, when him and his wife yeah. had their baby, right? He says it's like so. This is what happened. She got the ambulance ride. She had her own private room. We had three like zero dollars. Right? He had three midwives. Yeah, every right? other country, South Korea, you pay like a thousand dollars because of everything is covered. It, it gets there. better though. It gets better though. He had three. Mid he he got three midwives. And then, like, they, they would come in every single day and, like, something like that. And they would check in for, like, a few weeks, right, to check, to make sure that this, their their, uh, their their baby was okay, right? He's like, you know what I paid? He's like, what? He's like, coffee and a bottle of uh, whiskey or something like that to the midwife. 
Like, that's all he did. I was like, you know... At one hmm? point, black women that give birth in, in hospitals, the percentage of them um, hemorrhaging is higher than white women. Because you know what? They're not giving the care that they're supposed to be. That's also an issue with our doctors and our nurses, okay? It becomes a bigger issue. Yep. We need to... Everybody needs to be... When you have a baby, there needs to be care. I don't care for black, white, Asian, exactly. whatever. The, this whole thing, the fact that these black women are hemorrhaging more because their doctors aren't checking on them is disgusting to me. And I was worried that my sister would have to deal with something like that because my sister's a mixed woman, mm -hmm. okay? She had gave birth in the hospital, and I was like, Mom, you need to make sure you're in there at all times because I am not letting these doctors fuck up something and not check on her. Because yeah. you know what? It's... There's so many issues that are so, it's so complex. It and the is. fact that, you know, you have so much to have a baby here, and then you go to a different country. That's why you see people giving birth, what is it, passport baby, whatever the fuck they're called. Yep. They go to other countries and they have birth, and it's zero dollars. I, South Korea, this lady paid a thousand dollars because that's what she owed after insurance and everything. Well, you, you remember that? I right? remember, I'm, one minute, one more, one, sorry, one more no, thing. It's okay, my it's okay. Told me, my mom told me that when she gave birth to me, she had to learn how to give CPR and everything to the babies. I don't even think they do that now. Wow. My mom had to, before she could leave the hospital, she had to learn CPR and everything on the baby. That's insane. Because oh. you have a lot of choking babies and stuff like that. I don't think these women are being taught that either. There needs to be, I like... I have no idea. Oh. Well, what's funny is, uh, like, you remember my friend who told you about that, like, uh, uh, earlier that said that he was a limousine driver? It was cheaper for him to fly to Greece, where he's originally from, right? To get, like, you know, uh, some medical procedure. It was, like, his, like for hair or something like that. It was cheap for him. A hair to, oh, a hair transplant. Something like that, yeah. To get that done in Greece, stay there for a few weeks, right? while, and then come back. Then it was Why do you actually think people going, go to Mexico and get veneers. Why do yeah. you think people go to Mexico and get the teeth done? Yeah, get plastic surgery done because it's cheaper there. This is why I used to think that healthcare was a privilege. It's a fucking right. I don't give a shit what anybody yeah. says. It really is. I don't it, care that if I have to wait, if I have to make an appointment, you know, five months ahead, if I have to wait three hours at the doctor, but it's free, sign me up. Exactly. I and I'm getting to see quality doctors too. Mm -hmm. It's not because you know how you know it is now. Like your insurance may not cover the best doctor. Like you know, like I have Aetna or whatever, and Aetna only covers X Y Z, but the best doctor only covers like you know Geico. What I don't Geico's car insurance. I'm sorry, covers only Anthem and whatever. Yeah. What the fuck am I supposed to do? I have to pay out of pocket to go see the best doctor because my insurance doesn't cover it. Yep. No, that's fucking bullshit. Yep. And you know, I I don't have to worry about it because like I've got my um I got my VA. Right, I got my trike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'm, the, I'm, the VA's not even the best. It's some people that wait outside all day at the fucking VA. Well, my VA, thank God, is great. They they take mm -hmm. good care of us, and I'm so thankful. Sure. Yep. And, and but like, there's a lot that aren't like that, and I really do think that there needs to be a, a serious overhaul of the entire medical system in the country, essentially. And like, oh my if, God, if, I know. And, and and if you could actually do that, if you could fix the healthcare in this country, you're already a step in the right <laughs> direction, and you'll you'll also see an increase in childbirth as well, too. Like, guaranteed. Like, when you, yeah, because childbirth. I know we're divulging on whatever. I'm no, fine okay. with free. I'm fine with free talking. I got all the time I need, right? Yeah. When you think about the the increase in like people not having kids, like I look at like you know countries like South Korea and whatever, it's an all time low because people are working nine to five and not even having enough to work pay for rent. What makes you think they can afford to have children? Like, inflation is causing all that, and it's coming back to, like, what we first talked about with the appliances and whatever, with inflation, right? People are not having enough money to have children, so the rate of children being born is going to go down. Exactly. So, there's a bigger issue when it comes all onto this. Healthcare, we need to revise healthcare completely. And I don't like this fucking bullshit packaging. You pay $500, you get the best package. $200, whatever. The prices that, and, the, you know, I, okay, and the thing with the children covered until 26, yeah, I'm glad that I don't have to worry about it until I'm 26, but I don't even know where to begin to get health insurance. I've never even been learned, never taught how to get health insurance, car insurance, renter's insurance. How, where do you go? How do you do that? And how do I know I'm not Yeah. Like, parts and all of this. when it freezes you're frozen on my yeah, screen yeah, yeah. it was it was frozen on my end as well so just say what you just said oh i said the way that the country is set up is not helpful for anybody my age and then people blame us that we're not working hard enough what am i supposed to do work three jobs and then get paid 12 dollars an hour so mm -hmm. nine to five 
I'm sorry, but it was easier back then. You could forty thousand dollars could get you a fucking house. Forty thousand yes. dollars can't even get you a decent car. It really like a can't. good car. It really can't. Like that's, that's I don't fucking... And then when you're in school, they don't teach you about what the fuck is an interest rate? Why is the interest rate so high? Okay? Student loans. Okay, I have to pay a lot for college, but I might not even get get that return on my investment. Because the rate of the the, the interest rate might be twelve percent. So if I'm my when I get the loan it's sixty thousand in five years it's one hundred twenty thousand dollars. You're forever in debt, okay? Yep. Like, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to get car insurance, what's, health insurance. What's the point of it all, right? I mean, What is I, the point? Yep. Yeah, yeah. And then when you get your employer, like, you don't get health insurance right away from your employer, right? And you still got to pay into that. And the Social Security, Social Security is not going to be here after a while. It's, I honestly see Social Security happening for maybe 10 more years until it's gone. And then what do you do with people that have paid into it do? The 401k. I don't know what to do with a 401k. Yeah. I'm sorry. I am a Gen Zer, guys. I am proving to you that Gen Z does not know stuff because we are not set up to learn this stuff. Okay. School. We had econ. They tell you how to write a check. They tell you how to. Oh my time. All good and all, right? I don't know how to. And I know how to write a check, but they don't teach you this stuff so that we have people my age having babies, not being able to afford having babies, being put into loans, not knowing, you know defaulting on debt, et cetera, et cetera. So it really is a bigger issue, and the people want to come in and blame us because we're on TikTok all day. Yeah. I'm not on TikTok all day when I'm working three jobs and I can't even afford. And I'm not going to... And I just want to say one thing. The people that live in New York and complain they don't have enough to live in New York, don't live in New York. It's expensive to live in New York. California, those big cities, you know that already. You know that the minute you live, you stepped into there. It's freaking $8 for a bagel. You do know you're not going to make money. Yeah. Okay? Live where it's, be realistic. And honestly, I will say, living in a trailer is not the worst idea. It's your own property. It's your own home. They're actually really nice nowadays. And you know what? You're not paying forty. you You're not paying $300,000 for a home that you may end up leaving and not be able to sell after five years. Because the I heard this. Did you hear about that? The house bubble's going to crash soon? Yeah, I heard about that, yeah. I've just been ranting. I'm sorry. It's okay. No, no. Get it out there. Get it out there. It's, it's just that it's the matter of what's happening, and nobody wants to talk about it. They'd rather talk about stupid shit. And I'm like sitting here, and I'm looking, and like when I look for jobs and whatever, it's like, you know, basic jobs now, they want you to get a degree. Well, if I go and get a degree, that's four years of my life, and I'm not expected to get a return on my investment. Not sure I'm getting a job out of that, straight out of it. And somebody who might have more experience is going to get the job before me. And I understand that. Like, you know, but it's just a never-ending cycle, and then they want to blame it on Gen Z. Like, we're the worst people. Yep. And, and you know what? Mm -hmm. I want to blame my parents' age. We're the people that didn't set it up. I want to talk about how we don't do anything. My parents are 50s. And they're 50s. We don't do anything, whatever. There are some of us who are working four jobs, and we still can't afford to make rent. Why Why is it costing $6 to get butter? It costs... I was at the grocery store the other day. $6 for a thing of butter? Mm-hmm. Making butter cheaper with them. I'm gonna kill myself. Do you remember when eggs were like ten dollars? What was that? Yeah, that was that was the bird flu. That was the that was like the bird flu. Like they had to get rid of a lot of bird chickens for. They know about the bird flu. Yep. So. And I want to say, and the thing with the gas, gas is three dollars right now. It's not as bad as it was when it was four dollars, but it costs a lot to fill up your tank, and you have to keep on doing it if you travel for work. Yep. Yeah, I got you. No, trust me, you're, you're preaching to the choir here. So, like, and you know, people are like, what does this have to do with the fourth topic? It it all ties Everything. in. It all comes it all into ties. it because you know what? If you can't even afford to raise yourself, how can you afford to raise a child? Exactly. And you know, like, and, and when people say, "Oh, well, maybe you shouldn't have sex," I'm sorry, we are primal creatures. Don't have you know sex. What? I've been a three year relationship. I have sex with my boyfriend. Sorry, I don't want kids. I use protection, whatever. But you know what? It can happen. It could. And I also want to say this: having kids also means having a good school. You don't want your kids to go to the shittiest school, so you want to make money that you can go to a good school district. Yeah. And you know what? If you go to, if you live in a shitty district and you want your kids to go to a better one, you have to drive them. But what can you do if you have to work a nine to five and you can't drive them? Exactly. They're gonna get the shitty education. So public school is another thing that's really shit right now, and it's by like land taxes or whatever the fuck it is. And then you have that. There's a there's a school in Texas that has the you most beautiful uh, public school, and obviously it has the most beautiful because it's in the million dollar area. Yeah. But when you go to like cities like Richmond, where it's like not a lot of money, they're shitty, shitty schools. And I remember back in the day when people couldn't even, when people had to share textbooks because there wasn't even enough textbooks for the kids. Yep. It's so fucked. Our our parties. We're fucked. Our future people. 
Okay, they're not just like five years old forever. They be turned into adults. They turn into people who have to do the same thing as we do. And I want to set my kids up for success. I don't want to set my kids up for failure. Yep. And I don't think any parent does. But you know what? When we live in a society like this, when we have now have to worry about war that's going on, and, you know, I don't want to bring that up, but, like, war in the fact that, like, we can't, like, insurance. Like, I saw something, this lady paying $128. And because Geico has this thing where you, when you drive, you have to, the safe driver app, so you have to switch it to a passenger. Nobody has time every time they're in the passenger seat to switch to passenger. So her rate went up by $60. So she has to pay like $200 now because somebody who driving was going fast. Mm-hmm. That's bullshit. It should be a fixed rate. Okay, you guys are making multi-million dollars already. Why do you... And the fact that they have to say when you're under 21 or if you're under 21, if you're a man, you would pay more anyways. Like, have you heard about that? If you're a man, you pay more for car insurance because yeah. you're risking your drivers. Yeah, it's been that way for years. And, like, under 21, you pay more, but that makes sense because you're, like, teenagers and whatever. Yeah. Also, don't buy your kid, teenage, your 16-year-old kid, a fucking Corvette or whatever. They're going to freck it. They don't need a Corvette. Get, get him a hand-me-down. Get him a hand-me-down. Get him a fucking Honda. Get, 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 him, get him a fucking Buick. Oh, I'm sorry. Get him a Buick or something. Get him, like, a Really, old... more of the story is that abortion leads to so many different things with pregnancy, livelihood, how you lit like... It's a bigger issue with America, and it's not just this one little thing. Because you know what? There's so many things into play. It's not free to get an abortion. Yet. And I don't even know if insurance covers an abortion. Um, I've never heard of insurance you're, you're, covering abortion. Your private insurance can, but it really depends. But, like, if you have an employer, some employers will cover abortions. Tell your employer to cover your abortion, right? Yeah. So, yeah, it's just... But, um, but again, you know, I can have this conversation... But I don't have to worry about this thing. Why? Because mm-hmm. I, I don't have to worry about ever getting pregnant. There are women out there that do have to worry about this. And, you know, it's just like, oh, now I remember what I was going to talk about. Like, when I, when I had that conversation with, um, a while back, um, she asked me, he's like, they did a street survey of people. And they asked guys, like, if women were not were gone for 24 hours, what would you do? Oh, man, I would leave the toilet seat up. I would just, you know, I would drink milk from the carton. I would do... But a woman, women were asked, like, what's the most consistent thing you would do if men were gone for 24 hours? Some of them said, go for a walk at night by myself. But some scary. Of, that is scary. It is. But, like, that's, it's the simple things that, you know. Hmm? So, yeah, the simple things. Yeah. Also, the thing, okay, I'm going to talk about Mark Cost Tough Career or whatever. We don't have security cameras on, like, every street. Like, our security, like, is really bad in this country. We need to have security cameras everywhere. I know in South Korea, I bring it to South Korea a lot, they have security cameras every fucking street, everywhere. Nobody gets away with jack shit, and everybody has dash cams. Mm-hmm. Okay, we need to have, like, these are security things that make it so that if people do stuff, you can find who it is. Yeah. You, you like, know. we need to have more security for people. Even, not even just, like, um... For women, for men, like, also men get assaulted too. Men get, they don't, may not get as much sexually assaulted, but they could be walking out and get mugged, beat yeah. up, whatever. Yeah. And it's still traumatic. You, you know the fucked up thing that people say why they don't want to have those cameras up there? Because get big government, they want to get spied upon. It, it's, it's the big government. I'm sorry, but the moment you gave you that you were born and they have your social security number, the government knows everything about you. I, I your social security come. Your social security number is your identifier. People can steal your identity with that. So yep. the government, you have a phone. The government knows where you are. I don't want like, the government tracking me down here. Let me make a phone call. You know right where right. you are all exactly. the time. It's, people are so stupid when they say that. They can, if you've ever like, um, your social security number, your dental records, like people, you, you, your dental records, because you've gone to the dentist, I'm sure, once in your life. Mm-hmm. It's just funny to me when they talk about being tracked or whatever. How knows our data? The government knows your data already. They have your social security number. Mm-hmm. That's everything they can look up. Yeah. They can find out your address from that, your employer from that. Because yeah. you give it your you give your social security number to your employer when you give your tax information. Yep. Some people I think just don't use their brains. Like really I don't want the government tracking me. They know your they can track you have their social security number. And even if Social Security went away, that, that that's not going to go away. Your number doesn't go away because that's how they know who's alive. Exactly. Whatever. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. I, I, oh, my Lord. 
It's okay. I mean, yeah, it, they should. But hey, I don't mind you like ranting. You know, you got to get it out there. It's not. It, it's. It's. It, you can tell. Like this is something it's you. Really, it's good content at least. Yeah, <laughs> but, but that's that's the point. It's like I don't mind if people rant. Like I don't mind it. Like sitting back and like I want people to like if there's an issue that's bothering them, fucking get it out there. You know. Yeah. I mean, let, let your let your voice be heard. That's what this this is like. Better that's than what this is. drama all day. You know. It's better yeah. than Discord drama. Well, it's not so much because, like, people love, like, the fiery content about, like, oh, this content creator did this to this content creator. What should we talk about here? You know I mean? Like, and, and I'm not down on people like that, but that's not that's not my biz, okay? I don't give a shit about what people do. I want to talk about issues. I want to talk about what is... Like, when I hear about this infrastructure bill that's always on the news, like, I've, I've seen stuff happen, but it's, like... You know what could have been avoided if we had better infrastructure? That fucking crash with that freaking boat crash. The the bridge. That bridge looked like it was paper thin. Mm -hmm. it was that was waiting to happen. You know what? Like, and the fact that the GOP wants to fight against the infrastructure bill is wild to me. Even though wild. It's, even though they take credit for the credit funding they get, it it, it, it gets so much money. You know these like when these government officials they build libraries and all this shit. They get money, lots of fucking money. And I'm not gonna lie to you. Some of them tunnel that money into third-party offshore accounts, and they f whatever, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> they get money to do stuff like that. Like, exactly. Why don't you want to have better infrastructures? I'm sorry. Like when I talk to people who live in other countries and they talk about their sidewalks everywhere, there's not sidewalks everywhere here in America. There's not. Mm -hmm. Overpasses don't have like. There's and this public transportation system. Why don't we have a bill for that? Why don't we have a bill for universal public transportation? Well, what's amazing is the fact that they're actually going to, uh, like, we've been talking about it for years, but they actually are um, starting to build the construction of the high-speed rail, first high-speed rail between L.A. and Las Vegas as proof of concept, which I love. I love the fact they're doing that because I've been on uh, those speed trains in uh, uh, Germany. I tell you, it runs. Cool. It is amazing. Because we've really been to the the thing on Disney, you know how they have the monorail in Disney, mm -hmm. which is kind of like kind of similar kind of thing. But like, uh, can we just get like the bullet trains like in Japan? Like, I know the size of our country is big, but the fact that we don't have buses for like everywhere and stuff like that is a big issue because transportation is a big issue. I can't from like my capital is like thirty minutes away from me. I'm not going to say which direction, whatever. Yeah. I can't get a bus from here to there. What if my job's there and I don't have transportation? Yep. Or the closest the glass the grocery store next to near me is. Three hours on the walk, or like twenty minutes by car. Everybody has cars. Not everybody can live in the city, and the cities here are not like cities in the other countries where they have grocery stores. They have regular areas like a tart. No, they're just like mom and pop stores that are freaking like selling vapes. That what is with that? Like the every city, like this my city is like a whole row. There's like vape, vape shop, vape shop, um, freaking like boutiques that sell eighty dollars shirts. That is not feasible for your local person. There's no grocery stores. And like, let's say vape shops, um, bong shops. I get weed's legal, but dude, it doesn't need to be every single shop on the street. Yep. Okay, I don't need that. And I don't, and I, you know what? I'm for smoking weed, but it stinks. I don't want people smoking weed on the public street. It stinks. Yeah. It does. I'm sorry. I know people love it, but it stinks. It does. Like, our cities are not feasible cities. Like, at least, like, our big ones, like Los Angeles, New York, they have grocery stores, they have everything like that. But your local city, like mine, is not, like, a city that I can go and get a, go to a Kroger or something in. Like, it's not feasible to live there. And you don't, there's no security cameras or nothing like that. So it's dangerous for everybody, not just women. Yeah. But then you got some grocery stores where, like, if somebody, like, starts stealing, you can't even stop them. Like, you gotta let the cops... You're not handles. supposed to. You're yeah. not supposed to let them because they can lead to bigger things. Exactly. It's... You're supposed to let them do it. Which I understand, but because they might come in with a gun and you're just like... They don't... They're like, yeah. Like, I know when I worked at the pharmacy, um... Like, you had... Nope, we didn't have anybody, but, like, they don't want you to escalate because it can cause a bigger issue. Which I understand. Mm -hmm. But the fact that it's happening on a mass scale at, like, your CVS, your Target, your Walmart, and nothing's happening... It's time to get some security in there and stop yeah, it. Absolutely. Not time to just let them do with their asset protection, whatever. You know, you need security. These corporations have enough money to put people there. Target's a million, multi-billion dollar corporation. CVS, Walmart. You don't need, like, and the fact that they have to, like, lock up stuff now is insane. Yeah. But it doesn't help that the people, there are also people that are stealing, they're like mothers who are stealing formula that's, like, 
thirty dollars because they can't afford formula or diapers. Yeah. And, and so I know you can go like there's no I don't know if there's a local place, you know, there's local food banks, but I don't know if there's local places for you to get formula, diapers, etc. So there was actually a topic I covered a few weeks ago about like um PBMs. You know what a PBM is? I think I do. There's three is it like a farm? It's it's pharmacies. It's basically like the big pharmacies. There's three of them that control eighty percent of the marketplace in pharmacies, right? And guess what? Right. Walgreens, CVS, and Rite Aid. Uh, it's not Rite Aid, and it's not it's CVS, and I can't remember the other two. I, I I had I had it listed, but it was it was one of my topics a few weeks ago. I'd have to send you the link. But like they actually had at the White House, they actually had a discussion about PBMs, right? And there was a guy there that is independent pharmacist out of Kansas, and he said. If we do not get PBM reform, because PBMs are the ones that set the price for all your medications. Yeah, they're with- the big pharma. Yep. So what they do is, is like. You have like Purdue, you have um, the people who make the Oxycontin, exactly. you have. Stuff like that. I know yeah. exactly what you're talking about. They make yeah. the drugs that are like life-saving, like $40,000 yep. $40, for one life-saving drug when they should be like $40. So, so they're playing God. Yep, exactly. But here's the thing. This guy says, if there's no PBM reform by the end of this year. Thirty-four percent of pharmacies across the country, independent pharmacies across the country, are going to close. close. Down. Yeah. They're going to close down. And guess what's going to happen? CVS is going to move it, and they're going to charge whatever the fuck they want to for people. And you know, there's, there's, I live in a rural area. There's people here in this, in this rural area that I live in that need that medication that can only pay so much, and that's why they go to independent pharmacies because they can afford it. But CVS and other companies, they will charge whatever the fuck they want to, basically. This Let me tell you guys a hack. Anybody that gets medication at CVS, I'm going to tell you a hack. So I used to work at CVS. My mom works at CVS. Better RX. If you can get a coupon, always check Better RX. And it depends on your insurance. Mm-hmm. Your insurance may not want to pay that price for your prescription. If it's like $1,000 and they want to pay that price, then that they sometimes will check if there's a um, discount card, which is like a Better RX. But you also want to ask your insurance, you also want to ask your provider, hey, my insurance doesn't want to pay that $1,000 for this. Can we try something similar? You always want to ask questions like that because you know what? If they can get a better price, they will. Always use your better RX if you can find one. And because that's how I end up paying zero copay on most of my stuff. It's really not what CVS decides. We don't decide the prices. It's in- what the insurance wants to cover. If the insurance wants to cover it, they will cover it. But it all ties back to Big Pharma may set the price, but it's your insurance insurance company which decides what they want to pay for it. So you want to make sure that. So that's really what it comes down to. There might be a generic of it. Like there was a thing with Vyvanse that was happening, where Vyvanse, which is in like an amphetamine, like Adderall, Concerta, etc., people that have ADHD, they had just released a generic. So the insurance decided, hey, we're not going to pay for Vyvanse anymore. So you know what? It's not covered. We're only going to pay for the generic. But we know what happened. Nobody had generic Vyvanse anymore because it went, everybody that wanted to get it got it. And so that meant the price of regular Vyvanse shot up and the people that, and the, the insurance wasn't covering it. So you had a big issue. So you always, people that are watching whoever, if you have a medicine that your insurance doesn't cover, ask your prescriber, your psychiatrist, whatever, hey, my insurance doesn't want to cover this. Is there another one that's similar? Always do that and always check Better RX. It's a free website. It's good to use. But you know what? We do need big pharma reform and we do need stop we do need stop gaps in the sense that, hey, this patient's gotten six things of uh, oxycontin in three days. Hey, stop. And that really that's how you let it be so addiction's a very big issue that I touch on because my dad is a former addict. My dad talks to addicts at uh, county jails. And it's a big deal. And there, there's ways it could have been preventative. There are doctors here in America that pill push, they do pill mills. And they don't recognize when somebody needs to not take these medicines. And so they just write them and write them and write them. And then you have people that come in that are addicts. They also steal the pad and they write their own form, their own prescription. So it's a bigger issue. Um, yeah. What did I could talk about if you ever invite me on again, whatever. Yeah. I would love to talk about pharmacy stuff because yeah. that's a big thing that I'm big yeah. on in an addiction. Yeah. But yeah, the prices with pharmacy is insane. And we do need to blame Big Pharma for, for these issues because it's their fault. I, I they love, produce these drugs. Mm-hmm. I do love the fact that Mark Cuban used Cost Care Plus, where it, people can actually get medication at cost. Like it's actually cheaper. Like their insurance will actually make it less expensive for them. Like they can actually afford it. He's at, and he actually created this company, and it's actually saving people money. And like they, and it's funny because like you got people on Twitter saying 
Mark, you're using your money for good reasons. You're supposed to be going to outer space with that shit. But no, I love the fact that he actually did that, though, because, like, that's the kind of stuff we need. So, like, that was... Yeah. If you're using Ozempic for weight loss, stop. People need it because they have diabetes, okay? Which ones? Ozempic. They're using it for weight loss. There's Mojerno. There's other... There's Wegovi. Mm -hmm. There are other types. Ask your doctor if you can use the other ones because Ozempic is needed for diabetics, and there are diabetics who cannot get Ozempic because all you people want to be skinny. Yeah. Also, Ozempic has side effects. It you lower your appetite. You can go back to how fat you were if you stop it. Like, oh my god. I feel bad for people. I just feel bad. Yeah. Because I had people coming into my CVS that couldn't get their Ozempic because they had people that are trying to get skinny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> no, no. D don't apologize. It's okay. And like, like I said, you get it off your chest. I mean, this is good information to know about. So, um, before mm -hmm. we go, before we go and close up shop, um, I just want to say this. You know, I, I this is why I love having conversations like this. You know, it's not like the typical. It's just like it's issues that we feel people need to be talking mm -hmm. about, or it's stuff where, like you know you might see it, but I like to see other people's perspectives upon it. You know, because like it gets people fired up. And, you know, and even if it's not talk about these things either, like you've you've talked to me before, I don't really talk about most of these things before too, so it's a new perspective, I guess. Exactly, absolutely. So, um, yeah, but uh, you want to kind of give yourself a one last shout out and just let everybody know what kind um, of a platform I'm sorry, you're you know, I get fired up easily with certain topics. Okay, that's great. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Only Small Peanut. I do tweet dumb shit. I do retweet Yakuza stuff, and I retweet other things. You will not find K-pop on my account though. That's a different account. You will not find K-pop on there, I promise. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm a little buzzed right now, but you know what? Um, I do have a Discord, so, um, but if you want to join, just message me on the, on Twitter. I'm not opening up right now just because weirdos, but yeah. Um, weirdos on the always, internet saying it, so. I know, right? As always, only small yeah. peanut. I will stream eventually. Yeah. Yeah, also, shout out to NoCal Mike. NoCal Mike is a real one. Shout out to him. Yep, he just followed too. So thanks a lot, NoCal Mike, for following. So, all right. Well, uh, once again, Peanut, thank you so much for coming on here. This was once again, it was it's a really fun episode, and I'm really glad that you had. A, hope you had a good time on here. Yep. And I'm so, sorry, everybody, to see that it froze up, but just Starlink is great when it works, but there are times it freezes up. Nothing I can do about it. It's either this or DSL because I live on the sticks. Eclipse. Huh? It's the eclipse. <laughs> it's the eclipse. It's the eclipse. <laughs> Watch out, you know, murder. So, but um, right. it's either this or I go back to DSL, and I'm not going back to fucking DSL. Starlink is where it's at for me. So, but anyway, uh, thanks everybody for that tuned in tonight. Be sure to catch me next week on the next episode of Current Events Untapped. Y'all have a great night. Bye.